Yes, we bless the Lord for this day and uh, an opportunity again that uh, he's given us to crown whatever we've been talking about over the, the last two days. Today, on Wednesday, we are trying to crown this as we continue seeking reasons why we need to serve God. And so this morning, I want to bless the Lord for you from wherever you are joining us as we share the word of God. Let us start with the word of prayer. Father, we thank you. Father, we love you. Father, we desire more of you in our lives, your Holy Spirit, to bless and guide us. And so, Lord, this morning, you are here with us, Holy Spirit of God. Help us understand. Help us apply. Help us hold fast to your word, that, Lord, your name be glorified. And so we bless you as we continue with reasons, even the, the fourth and the fifth reason that, Lord, you've given us to think through with regards to why we, we ought to serve you. Father, we ask that you are, you are ministering to us. Now start with us, Lord, for this is our prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Yes, uh, as we continue with the, with the topic and as, as I release the, the very fourth reason why we need to serve God, why a believer ought to serve God, is that uh, our faithful service, friends, our, your faithful service, my faithful service to the Lord, yields even greater roles for, the, for, for God's kingdom. That service that God has called you for, as you serve, as you are ministering before the Lord, as you are giving yourself out to be used of the Lord, one thing that you need to know that we need, that always should be at the back of our mind, that whatever we are doing is yielding even greater, greater roles in the kingdom of God. It may be small. Remember, the talents were given to the stewards. One was given just one talent. Another was given two. Another was given five. As, 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 the, as the master pleased. But uh, one thing that was very clear especially as we read from verses 23. Verses 23, verses 21 through 23 of uh, Matthew chapter 25, we are met with these words. And his master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two bags was also told the same, and uh, this is what he says. He said, you entrusted me with two, two bags, now the man says, of gold. See, I have gained two more. Verses 23. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Come and share your master's. In other words, whatever these friends were given, they might be just two. It, was, it might have just been five bags, but they undertook to serve the Lord with, with whatever they, they were given. And out of this, there's a greater good that, that they are, they are, both of them are being promised, as you can see. Come and share your master's happiness. So whatever treasure that has been given to you, and we were saying last time that it is given to you, even to the, to, to, to the pleasure of God himself and us, and so it might have been two, it might have been only five, but look, there is a greater happiness that the master is uh, even uh, promising these this, uh, faithful servants. And so uh, number, number four, as we think through the reasons why we need to serve God even, even uh, more, is that whatever he has placed upon our hands, whatever we have for the service, as we serve faithfully, this has potential of even yielding greater, I mean, uh, the greatest in the kingdom of God. But the roles that uh, this small talent that is given you, as you work it out, as you work this talent out, there are other roles that uh, will be created, other avenues that this will create for you. For you see, twice uh, the master finds to tell the two, stewards who found time to serve, who are faithful, 
over the very few things. And he says that the, over the very few things that uh, you people are faithful, uh, I, I will make you do, even uh, enjoy the happiness that is with me. That many things are going now to come your way out of the very few that which you found to serve the master with. And so the, the, these two stewards, these two stewards, realized that as one, one, one good thing and humbling experience that I want to believe that uh, both of them had, that as, uh, as uh, few as the master is announcing that I, I entrusted you with these few things and you have uh, instead brought, you've, uh, you, I mean, uh, you, you have worked it out and so happiness is what I promise you. As you remember, uh, as, as you see this, I think it is a humbling experience even for, for this, uh, this who found to discover whatever their talents or their who served the Lord with the, the very few that they were given. So in that small way, serve the Lord. In other words, what uh, the master is trying to, to, to make all of us know is that he has entrusted us with all these talents, all these abilities, all this strength that he has placed in us as believers. So in that small way that he has done it for you, just serve him. Prove faithful in that very small way that he has given. It is an opportunity for you to serve because in that, in that small way, there will yield even greater roles for you, greater happiness for you even in heaven. And so friends, I think uh, we should learn to be faithful out of this. We should uh, also learn to, to know that uh, God has called us not to compare ourselves one with the other, you know, the, 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 the person who was given uh, two would say that uh, I may not work it out. And I thank God for this second person, not like the, the, the first one who was given one. He would have said that why couldn't he just give us, all of us, uh, five? Why give me two? You know, it is not in our, in our rights to, de to decide what to be given. And so I want, to, uh, I want to beseech us that as we think through serving God, let us desist from comparing ourselves one with the other uh, because uh, each one of us is gifted differently. One, the, the calling that we have are different. And so what God is, is uh, trying to remind us even in this parable is that we shouldn't compare ourselves. What we need to do is that whatever he has given you, how small it is, or is it, just, just uh, serve the Lord with it because as you serve the Lord, it will yield that which he has, the ultimate good that he has for all of us. And number five, even as I crown it up, that we should, uh, we, we should as, as we serve the Lord, we should uh, have this reason that uh, we do not want, you know, as in our service, let us not serve, let us serve with uh, a feeling that uh, we shouldn't be characterized together with this, 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 uh, this other servant who had one, who brought one, and you see, he was that wicked servant whom uh, the, 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 the master really rebuked. And so as we serve, let us, uh, our service not be characterized with the wickedness that was found, or that was discovered in this man, that meant the man not to be ushered in into that happiness that these other people did. So reason that you should serve God even more and uh, be careful that our service will not be characterized with the, the wickedness that was discovered in that single person. Our service should, be, uh, should not be characterized with any form of wickedness. You know it is uh, the wickedness that was in the, the life of the, the very first person who was given one talent. That person, the third, the third steward, did not use the resources that he was given. Uh, yes, he even went ahead and blamed the he, blamed, he went ahead and blamed the master. Listen to what 24 says. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not uh, scattered seeds. So I was afraid and I went out and hid your, your gold in the in the ground see here is what belonged to you then verses 26 his master replied you wicked lazy servant so you think i mean so 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 you knew that i i, I harvest where i have not sown 
and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well, then, you should uh, have put my money on, uh, on a deposit with uh, the bankers so that uh, when I return, I would have received it back with interest. And so you see, in our service, we should be careful that our service is not characterized with wickedness that was found, was discovered in the life of, of this, of this uh, friend. Because uh, you can see that the master says that uh, the very least that uh, this steward was given, he didn't even use it, he didn't even take it to the bank. He didn't uh, invest it so that uh, maybe what the interest that he would have gotten would have not what he, had, he, he worked for, but the interest of that which uh, the master left for him. So that, that caused the master to rebuke him harshly. And verses 20, the, the very last verse, verses 27, we see how the master rebuked him harshly because uh, he was not, uh, he, he failed. He failed, friends. If he failed to, 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 to serve. You know, we are all called to serve. So, you know, his failure, that is what I was saying, his failure to serve the Lord must have uh, been occasioned by lack of love even to, to, to his master. Because he said that, you know, I know you, you are a mean man. And so there are some things that he knew about the master. He didn't love him. And so, friends, as, as, as we can see, the harsh rebuke came out of his failure, and his failure might have been because his love for the master was void. He didn't, he didn't love his master. So the, 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 the master, the, the text continues and says, the master ordered that even that which he was given was to be taken away from him. I think maybe as we go through these texts and as we read these scriptures, something would, uh, uh, you would think that, you know, we were called to just, I mean, we, we, we are saved to serve. I want to believe that uh, that is not true because, you know, we are, we are called to sal salvation by grace through our faith in Jesus Christ. Let me make this clear even as we wind up. We were called or saved by grace through our faith in Jesus Christ. And so we are not saved to, we are, we, our, our service is not what is saving us. It is the grace of God that saved us through our faith that we had in Jesus Christ. And so, friends, one thing, and as we read Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 8, says this, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith in Jesus Christ. And this is not for yourselves. It is, a, it is the gift of God. It is, it is a gift of God. So we are saved not by works that we do, you know, because maybe we've been talking about serving God, serving God, and you may think that our salvation is a, a, is a result of what we can do to God. Actually, what uh, Ephesians reminds us, that by, our, uh, by, by grace and uh, through our faith in Jesus, and so we got, we, we became born again. Matthew chapter, chapter 10 and verses 45, as I, as I bring this to an end, Matthew chapter 10 verses 45 if I, if I would just paraphrase it, because it is getting off my head, is that, you know, we are saved through, I mean, by grace, through our faith in Jesus. That should be the fundamental reason why our salvation came our way. But you see, Jesus Christ worked. We know him as a servant. Jesus was a servant leader. He taught servant leadership. And because of his being a servant, and he, he is calling us to this salvation, him being a servant. And so, you know, we only serve because we are doing, we want to be like Jesus. That is why we are serving. That is why God is calling us also to think about service with regards to uh, this great salvation that he has called us to. God has called us to be like Jesus. And because Jesus was a servant, and so you and myself should serve. You and myself should be found serving. Therefore, our service to God, the talent, the time, the abilities that God has given us should be just reasonable in the way that we are responding to that which we have seen in Jesus Christ. We know that Jesus served, and so in our response to that love that which we have seen in Jesus, and so we also find time to serve. And so, friends, remember that our service, number five, as we bring this to an end, should not be characterized by 
uh, as as uh, as the, that of uh, that other servant who didn't do anything, who was uh, should not be characterized with wickedness, such that we should discover that the Lord is calling us to exercise, serve because He Himself served. We are not serving that uh, service will save us, but we are saved. We, uh, we have saved by grace through our faith in Jesus. Jesus, who was a servant, and so because of that, we are also called to live lives that emulate the life of Jesus, the life of a servant. May God bless you and God do you good as we continue thinking through this subject and this topic of uh, our service and commitment to the Lord as believers. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we honor you. There is no other good way, Lord, you, have, you would have uh, spoken to us in Matthew, Father Lord, Chapter 25, O oh, Father Lord, as, as you have uh, spoken to us this day, we bless you, Lord, for this parable that has great teaching for us, that shows uh, we should show commitment and, uh, and faithfulness, O oh, Lord, even in the service that you've given us. So bless us, O oh, God, as you help us think through this, even five reasons, to the glory and honor of your name. So we bless you and we honor you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.